John 8.35 Servus alter, non manat in domo, in aeternum, filius manat in aeternum. Now, a slave does not remain in the home, in the house, forever. The son remains forever. In this verse, the two things I would highlight for your attention, maybe three things. First of all, we'll say autem. Here is more or less just a kind of weak connector. Again, sometimes it can have a strong adversative sense in the Vulgate, but often it's just something like English now. You know, sort of a, a connecting particle that just allows the speaker to continue and, and add something new to what he's been saying. Uh, I also want to highlight for you this word, domus, and I'm chuckling because this word is sort of notorious among Latin students who get uh, confused by it sometimes. Domus is mostly a fourth declension noun. And you might say, what do you mean mostly? And that, that's where the rub is. It's mostly a fourth declension noun in the sense that most of its forms, for instance, in the genitive singular, domus, follow the typical pattern for the fourth declension, but some, oddly, do not. We also want to remember that it's feminine as well. So examples of forms that follow a second declension pattern include the ablative singular, domo, as when used by its own, it can simply mean from home, away from home, place from which, that sort of ablative. We might also note that for the locative case, it follows the second declension pattern, domi, at home, which appears fairly often. Also, you'll see it in the accusative plural as domos on occasion, again, following the pattern for the second declension, but most of the rest of the time, it follows the pattern for the fourth declension. So that's just an oddity about this word that you need to know, and you need to know it especially because it's such a common word in Latin. You're gonna see it so often you're going to be confused by those things when you try and remember the contours of that noun if you don't keep that stuff in mind. In aeternum is a nice phrase that was idiomatic already in the classical period. We also have the adverbs simply aeternum to mean the same thing as well as this other one that was used, aeterno, very often the accusative or ablative singular forms of words like this might be used by themselves in an adverbial sense. But in aeternum occurs in good classical authors as well. It seems to become more frequent, at least that's my subjective impression, after these translations of the Bible into Latin become more common. This becomes a particularly common phrase among Christians, but there you have it. Filius manet in aeternum, there we see it again. And of course, these won't be the only times that we meet it in the Gospel of John.